the heart of God was for man to give the tithe and offering. The metric for uh, the tithe uh, is set. Offering is a matter of the spiritual purposed heart, which is the teaching that Paul addressed in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Now listen, even famous international teachers of grace, of the grace message, Joseph Prince, does not teach against tithing as a principle and uses Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8 to validate it as a practice for today. I could easily go down the list of notable teachers in this generation and past generations who studied and taught and lived by the principle of tithing. The testimonies of famous tithers who are, are, are also irrefutable evidence of the power of this principle. Now, we can name scores who began to tithe when they were poor and then became rich. Mr. Cromwell, uh, the founder of Quaker Oaks, Mr. Colgate, founder of Colgate Soaps, etc., Mr. Proctor of uh, Ivory Soap, uh, Mr. Matthias Baldwin of Baldwin Locomotive, uh, Locomotive Industry, um, uh, John D. Rockefeller, the multi-million, Rockefeller Sr., the multi-millionaire, Richard DeVos, the founder of Amway, Buffalo Dollar himself, you know, all right, the, the, the example uh, of being unable to tithe, the example of the poor being unable to tithe and the rich being able to tithe that was given in the teaching was most confusing at best. To say that a rich man can tithe more easily than a poor man is not necessarily so because that rich person could be financially strapped with debt and other financial obligation that giving tithes and offerings would be difficult for him as well. The tithing principle, whether practiced by the poor or the rich, involves a willingness to trust God, to reward your obedience and honoring him through the principle. So then, it is fair to both the poor and the rich because it is proportional giving out of what, out of what one has. I began to tithe when I was poor and in the natural, could not afford to do it. But when I did, I experienced increase that brought me out of poverty. We must not forget that biblical tithing is a spiritual principle which God honors and blesses. Finally, this is a matter of conscience. After all is said and done, the decision to embrace the principle of biblical tithing yeah, is a personal decision. Since the true test of the heart is the act of positioning one's treasure, those whose hearts are not fully committed will see this new teaching against biblical tithing as a scapegoat and rejoice in it. Others who see the mandate, the metric for honoring God as an expression of his lordship and their dependence on him as a source and sustainer of their life will continue to do so. You don't have to tithe out of fear and threat of being cursed, but you can do so out of obedience, gratitude, and, ex and in expectation of the promised increase. It's really a personal matter of the heart. You know, I love the passage in the book of Timothy where he has said he, he is instructed by Paul, and I'm wrapping it up. Preach the word of God. Be prepared. This is the New Living Translation. Be prepared. Whether the time is favorable or not, patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. 
They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject truth and chase after myths. Truth be told, the principle of biblical tithing did not start with the law of Moses and did not end with the fulfillment of the law of Moses through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Some will definitely gravitate to this teaching with an attempt to justify cutting back on their support for the work of God, but truth always prevails. Though when, the teach, when teaching this, it was clearly taught that under grace, motivation for giving offerings, that it could and should exceed the metric of tithing, but those who don't want to support the things of God will not adhere to it. The echo of the quote from the uh, 1968 famous speech by Martin Luther King uh, is appropriate here, that truth crush will rise again. Down through ages, voices have risen to crush this amazing truth on the principle of biblical tithing, but it continues to rise and be embraced and change the lives of the faithful. So to say that we <laughs> are not mandated to give the tithe as ascribed under the law of Moses is accurate. But to say that biblical principle of tithing is not for believers today is erroneous. Now, in the mid-70s, I was not a tither very poor. And I was introduced to the tithing principle by a non-tither. I was trying to borrow money from him. And he began to tell me, Ira, if you will tithe, God will bless you. Man, life was me. Life with me then was tough. I lived in a apartment that was the estate, the staging ground for the projects. I had dropped out of school and I had a minimum wage job of $65 a week. My needs had needs. And here I was being introduced to tithing. I wasn't a pastor. I was just one of the lay ministers at church. And at my church, they didn't teach tithing. But I read the scripture myself. And without the, without the revelation of grace and without the revelation of the word of faith, but simply seeing that God would bless me if I honored him with a tenth of my increase and an offering. And I did so. Trembling and trusting, I gave God the $6.50 and a $5 offering. Yeah, I went from a dollar giver. That's all because I every Sunday I had my dollar. But I went from a dollar giver to an $11.50 giver after I read the scripture on tithes and offerings. And it was so bad. My life was so bad prior to, I mean, it was bad. I, I worked in the place, uh, Heitman Baron Cortez, uh, off of Crest Street, <laughs> Crest Street in, 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 in Houston, Texas. I worked in the place called Steel Bay, and I was required to have steel toe shoes, but I couldn't afford them. So I had imitation steel toe shoes. So I was violating the uh, safety policy. So after tithing two weeks, I come to work and they said, the boss wants to see you. Wow. Fear gripped me because I said they found out that I don't have the steel toe shoes and they're probably going to fire me. So I walked up those long stairs to his office. And when I got there, he opened the door with a smile on his face and said, Ira, he says, have a seat. And when I sit down, he said, your supervisor has quit. And he has recommended you to take his job. Man, I'm going, huh? Because I had no idea. And he said, but you know here that seniority rules the day. And you have the least seniority in your department. But management met this morning. And management, we changed the policy. 
so that you could get the job and get the promotion. I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to shout here. I'm about to shout here. I got to be careful. I got to be, I, and so, and so, and so he said, your increase is going to be on your next check. Now, this is the end of the week, but they paying me <laughs> for being supervisor for the whole pay period. Now, you may say that's coincidental, but I don't. So I kept tithing. My tithe go up and my offering go up. I'm seeing a principle of increase that works. That when I honor God as source and sustainer of my life, and when I do that, God promises to bless me. We always talk about the curses under the law, but what about the blessings that are under the law? And so... I kept doing this, and uh, then God would give me ideas of how to uh, how to uh, work more efficiently and and bring the apartment more efficiently. And I got a raise, and I got a raise. And then one day, a guy walks up to me. His name was Arnold Gonzalez, and Arnold says to me, "Ira, you are a mighty smart guy to be in a place like this." I took offense. Wait a minute, you work here too? He said, "No, this is just my second job." He said, uh, "I'm really a computer operator." I'm going to tell my boss about you. <laughs> I say, okay, yeah, all right. Next day, he shows up with a business card from Southwest Data Management. The president was Frank Curtin. He says, Frank says, give him a call. I said, okay. So I called Frank Curtin. He said, yeah, Arnold told me about you, but young man, let me tell you, we don't have any openings. And uh, Arnold said, you're a smart guy. I could tell then he was just patronizing me because of Arnold. And I said, I'll, I'll come in tomorrow. He said, no, no, no. If you're just in the area, stop by. We'll put your application on file. All of our operators have gone to trade school. I convinced him to let me come in the next day. So I go in the next day. He tells me we don't have any openings. But Arnold said, you're a smart guy. I fill out the application. And just before, just as the interview was ending, he said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said, um. He says, let me give you this little test. He gives me an aptitude test. He comes out of the room with a big grin on his face. And he says, this has never happened in the history of our company. Now, we got to understand, you know, this company has never hired a black man. All of the operators were either white or Hispanic. He says, this has never happened in the history of our company. Nobody has ever made a perfect score on this aptitude test. We don't have an opening, but we're going to make one for you, Jesus. I got the opportunity because of my tithe. Here I am now. I'm standing next to guys who had to go to school to get the opportunity my tithe gave me. And from that opportunity, I went on to become a system analyst and I never went to school for it. Have no degree for it. In every situation, companies change their policy to hire me, to promote me. It's too late to tell me tithing doesn't work. It's too late to tell me offerings don't work. My experience is never at the mercy of your theological argument. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. Now, I envision a resurgence in the believers embracing the principle of biblical tithing and giving offerings, not out of compulsion or the fear of the curse, but because the Holy Spirit will take this time of controversy and will stir their hearts to trust God with this principle. There are going to be those who are poor, like I was, and who'll say, I have no other choice but to trust God to bring me out, and he will. So I declare that the ranks of the committed in giving tithes and offerings are about to increase in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.